turn our attention to what's happening in the Middle East as the uh, Israeli uh, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu could be about to be ousted after a uh, very close election. I think it's the, uh, uh, the fourth close election they've had in a row in just a matter of a couple of years. And it looks like he is going to be ousted after 12 years as Prime Minister. So what's going on? Let's talk to Dr. Alan Mendoza. He's Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Good morning. Um, uh, and Benjamin Netanyahu, I mean, he's just been around for so long uh, as, a, as the elected prime minister of, uh, of Israel. But of course, always leading a coalition. Those coalitions often very tenuously put together. And he's often been fighting for his political life, never more so with corruption charges pending. But what's happened in the recent election that means that he could now be seeing the end of his term? Well, something quite extraordinary, Julia, in that uh, over over 25 years of being in the front line of politics, I mean, he was first elected in 1996, which is extraordinary when you think about the longevity of a politician these days to be there for 25 years is quite extraordinary. But he's amassed a number of enemies over that time. Um, and in the last election, even though the right wing parties, of which, of course, his Likud party is a leading bloc, achieved a majority they're not able to put together a coalition with those right-wing parties because of personal animosities between Netanyahu and other right-wing leaders. So essentially, he's he's on the verge of being brought down on account of his longevity in politics, the enemies he's made finally coming yeah. together to uh, potentially take him out. This is a problem for anyone in power, though, eventually, despite, you know, whether, well, regardless of the, the personality difference, eventually you will make enemies because you've sacked enough people, even if, even if it's just a, a majority system. We find this with Labour and Tory politicians who've been in power. Eventually you've got enough people who you've sacked along the way or not promoted who are going to be angry. In terms of how the next coalition is going to be formed, uh, we obviously we've got this, this sort of kingmaker, the far-right politician Naftali Bennett um, and he and the opposition leader yeah, Lapid have, have agreed to, to forge a, a coalition government. Will that be a, a moderate government being left and right together? Will it, be, uh, will it be further to the right than Benjamin Netanyahu? And what will it mean for what happens in the Middle East and obviously in particular with relations with, uh, uh, with you know, people living on the Gaza Strip and Palestine and, and the like? I don't think it's fair to necessarily call Bennett a far-right leader. I mean, there are far-right elements in Israeli politics, but I don't think Bennett's one of okay. them. I mean, essentially, his his party is, you know, an offshoot of, of Likud. Um, it has the same sort of politics. Uh, the, the reality is that the coalition being formed, though, is a hugely unusual uh, beast. It's going to stretch from the far left wing of Israeli politics, a party called Meretz, all the way to Bennett, who is certainly a nationalist in that regard, taking everyone in between. Plus, crucially, for the, it's also going to take in a small um, Arab-Israeli party called the Ram Party, um, which has been described as an Islamist party, even, in terms of how it operates. So you've got a very unusual coalition. The reality is that coalition is not motivated by very much, except uh, a desire to remove uh, Netanyahu. And when you ask it what its policies are, it says it'll be a period of calm and rebuilding and actually oh. getting Israel back in focus. And I think there is something to that in the sense that Netanyahu has been around a long time. He's been defining Israeli politics. These guys are deciding, look, the country is about more than just one man. Let's see what we can do as a as a grand coalition, essentially. I mean, there has been this view that Netanyahu uh, is someone who sort of uh, pushed this strong man image, and that, and that actually he's he you know he's very much taken a very a very hard line stance on on the issues in, in terms of you know Middle East relations. Are we likely to see? Um, I don't know, more opportunities for any sort of peace deal to come about as a result of his ousting or, or not? Or will there well, actually be such a sort of difficulty holding that coalition together that that won't be on the cards either? Well, I don't think you're going to see any big peace initiatives, but mainly for the reason that who are these Israelis going to talk to? I mean, they've just had a conflict with Hamas. Hamas refuses to recognise them. Um, the Palestinian Authority, the, the president who's been president for you know 16 years, Mahmoud Abbas, um, doesn't want to have elections. He's 85 years old. It's unclear whether he's going to be able to have any negotiating prospects going forward. The, the trouble is the peace process is completely stalled until Abbas gives way or Hamas changes its tune. The Israeli side doesn't necessarily matter in this because it's ultimately the Palestinians who have to come together, solve their unity issues, and decide they're ready to come and sign a deal. So th this government hasn't come into place either with any mandate, if you like, to at form of peace deal. I think, you know, Israelis want a two-state solution if you poll them constantly, but they're very sceptical after things like in the last month that have happened mm. to work out whether it's actually possible to achieve it. So I wouldn't expect any major developments. What I would, though, expect should this coalition come to fruition, and it's a very odd beast still mm. being put in formation, anything could happen. There are 
individual MPs who could defect, for example, back to Netanyahu. But if it does come to power, I'd expect it to, like I say, take a look, we're a clean, uh, a new broom doing a clean sweep in, in the government approach. Uh, don't expect dramatic changes, just look for a change of mood music. I think that's what they'll be saying okay. at the top. Fascinating. Dr. Alan Mendoza, Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society.